Recently, I received a new keyboard from Tesor, their new SE Spectrum, and it kind of got me thinking, why did I ditch a full-size keyboard layout for a TKL version? I mean, I only occasionally play CSGO and require a larger surface area for my mouse to move around and not interfere with the larger keyboards, but what about all the other times when I'm not gaming? And so today we explore why full-size keyboards are still far superior on majority of desks, and this is not a you know debate between full size versus TKL because that can be kind of a toxic debate and uh, this is not what I'm trying to do but simply I want to express my own observations of switching back to a full-size keyboard after having used a TKL version for like exclusively for a year. I still love you G Pro but I think it's time to move on. And actually if you're on the fence about the TKL keyboard then check out this conversation. I'm sure it will be helpful but now here's a spot that you should probably not skip watching. Hi, I'm looking for a case. Well, look no further, I got this beauty. With all steel premium frame with a side of tempered glass to beautifully showcase any cooling adventure you might pursue and cable management system that you wish you had earlier. The H700i, this one's for you. All right, so let's begin. One of the dominant things why full-size keyboards are so popular and common among many desks is price and variety. So majority of the time, a TKL version of the same uh, keyboard model is either priced higher or very close to the price of the full-size keyboard. And this is the case with Logitech, Corsair, SteelSeries, Razer, and Cooler Master based on Amazon pricing. So you'll definitely be saving money if you're not looking for a TKL layout. So buying a TKL keyboard is like getting less product for more money. The SC Spectrum, for example, is 120 bucks, which is right in line to be competitive with others in its class. And there's also more variety on full-size keyboards, granting you more discount deals and visual options. In particular, we're now seeing compact frames that don't extend to these unreasonable sizes, making it more bearable for gaming purposes if you angle the keyboard properly. And one trick you can do is to make the keyboard appear smaller is to not light up that numpad area. Uh, and this actually has helped me transition from a smaller keyboard. And also we're seeing more switch types for full-size keyboards that normally don't enter the TKL stage. So for example, on this SE Spectrum, we have removable optical switches, either linear reds or clicky blues that are dust and water resistant. So you can actually wash the keyboard if you'd like without damaging anything, while an equivalent optical switch on a TKL keyboard is less accessible and more expensive, like on the Wooding One. Now granted, the Wooding One keyboard has analog inputs, so they're like on a whole another level when it comes to actuation customization, but then there's also bloody keyboards that are one of the only other brands to have optical switches on a TKL body, so your options are limited. But really the main advantage with full-size keyboards is to really embrace the full potential of that numpad and turn that lovely collection of numbers into your own macro center. Of course, it is extremely useful for Excel work and uh, use it long enough for the muscle memory to kick in and you don't even need to look at the keyboard for correct number inputs. It's helpful for banking when typing in your account number or writing out your phone number to someone and you gotta love that side enter. It's really good for Adobe applications in particular to accept changes instead of clicking control enter and it's close to your thumb and it's very convenient. But the main selling point should be those macros. Most keyboards now allow a macro customization either through software or on the fly. So you can just simply do that without entering any software, which is super convenient. And so here are my daily favorites. For Windows, switching audio sources, as I have three inputs total, one for gaming, one for editing, and one for music. So instead of navigating into the volume tab and selecting my source, it is now done with a single key. It's awesome. Opening task manager is now a macro for me. Instead of clicking control plus shift plus escape, I can also lock Windows with a press of a single button or switch between the multiple languages I have installed on my keyboard. And basically everything that's been done with some sort of shortcut with multiple keys in the past on my daily basis now has been condensed into a single key and it's freaking awesome. You really gotta embrace the macros because it will definitely change your workflow for the better. For my editing profile in Adobe Premiere, I've set my most used shortcuts like unlinking footage so I can delete uh, audio tracks or sync them up when I need to connect the audio with video. I can also enable selection follows playhead. So when I'm color grading the clips that are selected on where the needle is located and I can move through the grade easier. And then I can also enter the color grade or the main editing workspace with single keys on an iPad. And I'm still exploring how I can fill up my editing shortcuts 
and having different keyboard profiles allows me to basically layer purpose specific macros depending on what I'm doing. And now for gaming, I have to admit that I've never programmed a macro on my keyboard for any title ever. And that is because my most used shortcuts in game always occupy my mouse instead. So push to talk is usually located on the side for me. Melee is my middle mouse button. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only thing that I record to my mouse outside of the default configuration. But for example, flying in GTA 5 requires the numpad, right? And this one may be a stretch, but for left-handed users, remapping that WASD area into the numpad area may be more comfortable depending on how you interact with the keyboard and mouse. Now coming back to the size for CSGO in particular, I miss the compact nature of the G Pro, but I have learned to angle the SE Spectrum on a full size keyboard so that I have full maneuverability on my mouse regardless, although the removable cable on the SE Spectrum is a little bit thick and it's on the right side. So I have to sort of route it with my monitor so it doesn't interfere with my mouse area. And so this transition from a TKL to a full size keyboard has been a very welcoming change in me discovering my inner macro customization for the numpad that I'm starting to love on a daily basis. All right, so those are my reasons on why full size keyboards are superior without discrediting the advantages of TKL and smaller size boards. And if you have any sweet macros that you use for productivity, editing, or you know, like Windows environment, let me know in the comments below because I'm always eager to add more to mine. The new Corsair Void Pro gaming headset is comfortable, stylish in different colors, delivers fantastic wireless performance even for competitive gaming with an all new microphone for clear communications. Check out the Void Pro Wireless or Wired in the description below. All right, so that's it. Make sure to subscribe and check out this other relevant content here and just let's have a conversation. I love talking to you guys in the comments below. I'm Dimitri, we'll see you in the next video.